Look at that. This is what you want, big boys. When you get older, you want to look like this man. Yeah. I need a jacket like that. Barry, how are you, sir? I'm Brian Licata. Nice to meet you. I'm sorry that that didn't work out. I didn't I didn't know that the Mac browser was going to be an issue. Perfect. I just don't want to disappoint the legend. <laughs> I am number 79 in the greatest comedy comedian of all time. Is that, that's the Comedy Central list, right? I don't want to talk about it. You know, it's not my style. I want to start. It wasn't was my style when I was fourth, when I was third, when I was two, and it's been blasted off from carrot tops, as you know, took us. Well, if it makes you feel any better, I think I'm probably number, you know, you know, I'm number 1,467 when it comes to managers. So Congratulations. Like, I've seen you work. Yeah. Hopefully I can make the cut. Yo, Tommy. Hey, hey Tommy. Uh... Yo, Tommy. What's the saddest thing you ever happened to you at me? Your family or anybody that you really love? Oh, what a fucking great question to start the comedy podcast with. I can that's answer. That's what I do. See, I, 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 I drift around. These other comedians, they try to be funny, and that's not my bag, baby. Oh, I can. And when I answer that, you're going to be, um, you probably know everything about this, but um, I was I was married uh, when I was really, really young. Um, Four? When, when I was 20. <laughs> When I was 26 years old, and my wife passed away when she was 23 after eight months of being married. So that was the first. Uh, oh, would you, did you try your jokes, your jokes on her? I tried my jokes on her, and that's what ended it. Well, if she rises from the dead, tell her I said hello. I will, man. Everybody rises from the dead. Mother does. She does. Before that, let's do the, uh, the house prayer, anybody? Hey, Dom's. Uh, dear God, dear God, <laughs> give me some more money. <laughs> Anybody else? Yo, Dom. I don't think Steve's gonna. Steve, Steve can't get his internet connection to work, Dom. So I think it's just gonna be the three of us tonight, unless we can get him on here. Oh, we'll just go walking by every every ten minutes. Yeah. Okay. How did you uh, guys uh, get together? It's a long story, Dom. Do you want to tell it or should I? Yeah, you tell it. Tell him about the, the Kill Tony. Oh, come on. You tell him. You, you know what Kill Tony is? Of course. Yeah. So know. so I'm, I'm not a comedian, right? But I, you know, shoot and edit videos and all stand-up comedy related. And I, I love comedy, right? And I have some stuff written down, which isn't very good at all. Um, <laughs> but I decided to... You know, while I was down in Austin, I, I saw Dom and Eleanor uh, do pick Rogan's the pace, Club. The pace. Can you pick up the pace? All right. I'm sorry. Uh, anyway, I put my name in the hat, right? I get pulled, unbeknownst to my, you know, obviously myself, but Dom well, and Eleanor. Who are, uh, yeah, it wasn't, wasn't fixed. And um, yeah, I ate a dick completely. I got, I got a giggle, maybe a giggle. There was, there was a giggle somewhere. It was sad. <laughs> It was really it was just sad than anything else, and the more they hated him, it's like kind of a white kid who's you know little breaks, and these other guys are struggling and like making this thing this, this land think that's funny. And yeah. you know, you know, I, never, I never, I want to share something with you. Uh, I'm never, I've never seen you ever bomb. My ball. <laughs> He said bomb. Know? He's never seen you bomb, Dom. I've, I, oh, I thought I never seen your ball. <laughs> <laughs> just just the one, not, not the not the second one. Well, I have the thing because it's you would say this because we always my mom and her girlfriends and I always talk about that that left ball. And I said it's a right ball, you fucking get you know, <laughs> you go, go crazy. But um what do you ask me? He said he said he's he said he's never seen you bomb. Is that true? When was the last time you think you really really bomb bomb? What's today? <laughs> Tuesday. Tomorrow. You, yeah. you, 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 you cursed me. I think yeah. that's one of the things that uh, always blew me away about uh, very few artists. And we were joking about this beforehand, about being 79th on the list of comedy or whatever. But mm -hmm. I think it could be argued, Adam, that there's probably 79 people or less that just never bomb, you know, it's just no matter how bad the audience is, how shitty it is, they never bomb and you never bombed. 
um, I was in New Zealand with, with Sophie, and um, this girl comes up to me. It was like the kiss of death, you know. Uh -huh. she, I hear they, they said that you're the, one of the best, if not the best comedian in the world. Oh. Now, who judged that, you know, the guy's mother? Right. Anyway, I said, well, anybody can bomb, and believe me. Uh, I, I, I bomb, <laughs> and then we get up there, and we're drinking, and, and I, I, I was like, too late to, to really get, get anything out of them. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I don't know if I bombed or the audience or whatever, but it happened. And I say, there's your, there's your best comic now. What did you think of that? You <laughs> fucking witch. You put a hex on me. <laughs> so uh, what, did, what did you just get in, get in your head by saying that little line, you think? No, I think it was they were drunk. I, you know, oh, yeah. I didn't, I didn't yeah. deserve a bomb thing. I, I didn't, I, it, was, it wasn't good, but I wasn't terrible. What, what, when did you, you guys first meet each other? She said, you were, you were doing stand-up, weren't you? I I uh, I used to host. Uh, I started as a stand up, and I'll forget it. I'm not going to tell you, say I was a stand up because I was. <laughs> I don't think that there was anything about me. That, that, yes, there was. There was something equal to your set at uh, Kill Tone. That was yeah. Probably. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think we're in the same boat then. So uh, I'm, I'm glad to, you're on the show tonight with me. But I was a teen. <laughs> I was a teenager in Boston, and I was doing a lot of uh, open mic nights. And then I um, ended up taking over this comedy club called Played Again Sam's when I was a teenager. And I, you know, I put Bob Goldthwaite in to host Wednesdays, Dennis Leary Thursdays, I think Lenny Clark on Saturdays. Maybe it was Dana Gould on Friday, and then Anthony Clark on Sundays. And then I just took off, and I was hosting the shows on the weekend to save money. So mm -hmm. I would pay the fifty dollars per person, you know, because I didn't I was I was in school. I didn't you know and so and so I think Dom uh at one point in time was coming through uh New England and I heard things about him and I booked him and he killed and I think that's where I first met him, but probably where he first remembers meeting me is Montreal in the early nineties at that point. Yeah. Oh. That That's a, cool. That was, a, that was a great time up there. Uh -huh. I used to get. Where's this music coming? Steve, you're, Steve, you got music going back behind that mic, dude. Incredible. How many? How, many, how much? How much do you make a week? You talking about Brian or Steve or me? You. How much do I make a week? Well, Good I question, think, huh? I think you would know, Dom, in the comedy business, that there's not one week that's the same. In your entire uh, he used to who managed uh, Dane and who else? Uh, Dane, I just actually he just emailed me today. Dane Cook for 17 years. Um, wow, Dane, uh, Dave Chappelle for eight years. Um, mm -hmm. uh, for about eight years. Frank Caliendo for 10. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, uh, I represented, uh, I've been very humble to represent a lot of extraordinary people who were a number uh, 79 or below or above on that comedy list. Uh, but uh, I will say this, you know, all the people that I represented uh, and still represent to this day, um, all of them would tell you that uh, Dom Herrera is one of the greatest of all time. Stop it. Thank you. It's true, you know. <laughs> And there's something about uh, without, uh, you know, uh, I know you're going to find a way to make something comical about this, but I just want to just share something of what artists feel about the brethren of each other. They're, you know, the greatest thing that an artist can feel and have is when other great artists, you know, think they're extraordinary. Mm hmm. And I remember I went to see Cat Williams and he brought me backstage and uh, I told him a story of how when I was with Dave Chappelle at the Def Jam Comedy Awards, you know, and I asked Dave, I said, uh, how many geniuses are here? And Dave said, there's, there's two. I said, who are they? And he said, well, I'm just talking to you now being humble, but it's me and Cat Williams. And when I told Cat Williams that story, it's like he it, it's like he won the lottery. It's like it was the great, you know, the feeling that somebody who was great believes in you and thinks you're great. That means something. When I tell Dom that story and I, he knows that I'm he knows I'm not shining his ass. He knows mm -hmm. I'm telling the truth. 
it means a lot because that's all you money's great but respect outlasts cash and uh and uh and that's what uh, dom has respect you know i was on stage about two weeks ago and this guy goes we love you dom i go no, you can't heckle me with that what's my, my response supposed to be oh yeah well i love you too all right <laughs> um was that was that at the laugh factory someone someone yeah. said that well that was a, that was a good show wasn't it we were uh dom dom did the uh the last shows at the laugh factory over there at the trop in uh in oh, yeah, yeah. those were good shows with uh what was it it was harry and uh Ciccone were on those shows he knows all those guys yeah 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 it was basil why did the yeah, show? Harry, uh, Harry Basil did his did his act all these years later, and you know, he, I I said, Stu, 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 Superman doesn't have get you know get winded when he's flying. <laughs> you gotta you gotta get the outfit, on. please. That's great. His, his gun, his fucking big gun, the gun is hanging out. <laughs> um. Dom, you know, I never asked you this before, and maybe it's uh, not appropriate, and maybe you don't want to answer it, but out of all the comedians who are with us, you know, not the ones that are the legends who are no longer with us, but the ones that are with us, which one, uh, you know, moves you the most, their voice, their comedy? Is there one person that you're like, that's the, that's, besides me, that's the GOAT? Uh, no, different guys for different things. Like um, uh, Ian, Ian, what's his last name? Me, the, the writer, the really great uh, writer. Ian Edwards or Ian Bag? And, and well, both of them I like, but yeah, Ian Edwards. <laughs> Ian, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, he's in, but I don't have a best. I mean, so my friends are, you know, we have to say they're so different times. So, you know, I mean. Hard to, make, yeah. hard, hard, to, hard to make a decision with your friends. Yeah, I don't have – there's not one guy like – Michael Jordan's the best player now. Like right. He, what he really was the best player. It's subjective, you know. Right. But um, I really – I'm not trying to back out of it. There's, there's not one – I mean, Jonathan Katz used to crack me up, and he wouldn't be great for audiences. Right. He's just funny. This is how This is how you know what a savant I am. I'm going to say something to you, and you'll probably <laughs> laugh. And you tell me the significance. I said dry clean only. Uh, Brian Reagan. No, remember Jonathan Katz brought out the little guitar? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He said it said dry clean only. In, in other words, like he shrunk it down. <laughs> you, you guys ever see him? I, I never have. I mean, we had him we had him on the show, but and I've watched his the 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 Dr. Katz. TV show, but I, I've never seen him seen him live. But yeah, he's he's just I thought he was hysterical. He was but it, it's it's cool in Boston, and he used to he did me a favor. And when I booked my first headliner in Boston, which was Paul mm -hmm. Stone, he opened up for him. Oh wow! Um, I was very fortunate when I went to Boston because we all got along right away. I know these guys; they, they could all beat me up. Besides, they're, they're all like tough guys. But they were good to me, really good, and and so it was the easy easy swing over there. But they, the shows were ridiculously strong, you know. Yeah, yeah. Who who are those? Some of those guys, those like old Boston guys that were up there when you were when you went I, up. Dennis Leary was, you know, he great young kid, he, mm -hmm. and then who was a really fat, fat one? Um, John um, Panette. Panette, yeah. You know, I remember Jeff Ross was doing a roast in Montreal. And again, this John Panette was, this, for those of you in the audience who don't know, it was a very heavy set comedian. And Jeff, <laughs> Jeff Ross's first line was, good to be here in Montreal. I saw John Panette. He looks good. He lost 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I crazy. love doing, doing those rows. You know, I was, I'm old enough to have roasted the, 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 that whole di different generation. Like Milton Berle and all them. I like they were coming out as I was like a young comedian. And that was really cool. I can't believe I'm doing you know work with these guys. What 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 did you do with them? You you did a roast with one of those guys. Roster. Yeah, I was the kid. Then uh, Jeff Rush take over a couple of years later. You know, you get tired of telling people to 
Are you getting the, fuck the, fucked up the ass and all? It could be funny for a year, maybe. But. Yeah. Uh, you just reminded me of uh, <laughs> of uh, the young comedian at the time, uh, Whitney Cummings, had this really intelligent uh, blue joke she told. She said, guys always come up to me and they say, marriage is like prison. Marriage is like prison. And she'd look at them and say, well, you know, that's not exactly true because in prison you get to have anal sex. <laughs> I like that, and it's true. That's important. It doesn't matter if it's true. It's supposed to be funny. <laughs> I like it when it's funny and it's true. They don't, they don't judge you for it on your, hey, I, that last guy sucked, but very, very, very smart guy. You know? The audience didn't get him. No, I didn't either. But... <laughs> he was funny. <laughs> it was funny, dude. So you're right here. You've had a, 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 a podcast for like years. Uh, industry standard, yeah, it's like uh, sort of a, like an inside baseball of uh, this crazy fucked up business and uh, hopefully uh, inspires uh, artists to either move forward strongly or commit suicide, one or the other. But uh, hopefully it all works out when they, when they listen to it. And I've interviewed over 25 network presidents and studio executives and actors, actresses, comedians about their, you know, going from nothing or a studio apartment or just like mm -hmm. living in a car to, you know, being successful and how they did it and how they figured it out. Who's your favorite? Who's your favorite comedian? That's a great question. My favorite comedian, uh, my favorite comedian of all time, uh, unbelievably because it's, it's a different style of humor than people do today, but, Rodney Dangerfield was my. Oh friend. no, I, I was good. Me too. Yeah. I just I don't know what it is to be able to tell a story in four seconds. To tell a story in four seconds. So my parents hated me. My bath toys were a fan and a radio. I mean, auto <laughs> automatically you know his parents hate him. He's taking baths. They're throwing shit in his bath. Or it, it could be anything. You know, I went to the bartender. I said, surprise me. He pulled out a picture of my wife. Five seconds. <laughs> a day drinker. He, he was funnier when he was mad. And he saw uh, we, we, we were doing you know, the, the, you, the last one of the last movies you did. Uh -huh. I, had a, I had a little part in it. Rodney was, was a star. And uh, he, and Harry was uh, was the director, and he goes, "All right, let's do it again." And he goes, "Harry, what are you gonna do it again?" He said, "It's just me, dumb. We gotta do it." Twice. I said, "Well, it's a movie. You know, it's not like they they don't cover an hour, an hour and forty five minutes. Right? They can't go by time. Yeah, they. Oh, yeah. bullshit! It's fucking bullshit." <laughs> I, I was at his house one night, and I used to love to talk to him, just regular things in life, and. He says, is there anything I could do for you, kid? I said, you did it all. You, you, you gave me the, the special. You'd be my friend. How, you know how cool it is to be your friend? Oh, uh, you're, you're, you're all right, kid. You're all right. I said, well, you could do one thing. Close your robes. <laughs> I said, what do you mean? Because your robe doesn't close. I see a big purple ball of mine. I'll tell you what. It ain't right, kid. It ain't right. He's, he's, yeah, what Dom's alluding to is uh, is Rodney used to wear bathrobes everywhere, and he didn't just wear bathrobes with like boxer shorts underneath them. He wore nothing underneath. Man, and as he sniffed cocaine, <laughs> he asked me, "You want to get fucked up?" When he was eighty, he done. Want to get fucked up? I said, "Don't do drugs." He goes, "All right, we're here, baby. I'm right. Okay." It's anyway. amazing he made it to eighty. I mean, that's a good, that's a good yeah. run. I he mean, didn't make I, it, but uh, I think yeah, I, I, I probably eighty-one. Yeah, uh, <laughs> you know, young women uh, will uh, keep you alive. Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> that's a pretty good. I mean, that's like a spot on Rodney too. Dom, <laughs> that sounds, uh, sounds just like him. Yeah, but everybody can do it. It's like the Edward uh, G. Robinson thing from. Ah, where's the drummer now? Say, hey, ma. Yeah, yeah. Or in the 80s, every comedian, the Jack Nicholson, when they go like this. And yeah. I, I don't really, I can't really do them. I can only, the guys that really can do them, like copy their style. 
And, you know, not, not on stage, but when we're fucking around. Yeah. Yeah. The impressions are funny. I mean, you were talking about Dr. Katz and this weekend or when in Vegas, we saw I saw Harry and I saw Ron Pearson, who has like a variety act. It's 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 interesting. The breadth of what people will do on stage as stand up also like the range of what you can get. Yeah. Rich Little was there and he's he's going, you, you young guys, you know, Johnny Carson and them They're like, hey, how old is this fucking guy that Johnny Carson's young to him? <laughs> we met his what we met one of his ex-wives too dom you remember that and we met some of those uh what were they the um oh yeah uh those dancers the uh 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 follies Berger or whatever there were some old old vegas dancers that were hanging around the trap they were they're they're bulldozing it to make way for the new baseball stadium yeah that's what i want 100, 115 degrees baseball <laughs> yeah. death's door <laughs> just roasting out there in the stands. I didn't even think about that. I That's a good was, point. I thought it was going to be an indoor stadium. It's still hot. <laughs> yeah. <it's> still... <laughs> uh, have you ever been to the one in Arizona, Dom? The 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 Phoenix Diamondback Stadium? No, I was in the football stadium, but not the, not the baseball. Oh yeah, same. I don't yeah, like same. baseball. It's too fucking long. Yeah. Everything should start in the eighth inning. That's 20 minutes. All right. Yeah. Eighth inning, two guys on. <laughs> Full so count. Much, did you stick away, stick away a lot of money? You talking to me? Did I stick away a lot of money? Yeah, anywhere. Like you know, Dom, like, you, you know, what's fascinating to me, which I would never ever expect, honestly, is that that's like the third question about money. I I, I don't I'd have never thought of you as the guy who cared about you know you cared about respect not money no you know that's just trying to be funny it's really <laughs> not real. so i can do but you know try and be funny and, no but i mean I, I have to live up to this, these impro if I, you know everybody thinks that uh you know, you know everybody thinks that uh i mean your parents probably told you this amongst uh be in between beating you but um you know <laughs> you always say you know anybody who told you that money will make you happy, never had any to begin with. And I'll never forget that. I heard that my whole life. And I, I you know, I say something to you in, with humility, Dom, and I know it's not going to come across the right way. But when I was very little, I wanted one thing. I wanted to live across from the ocean. I wanted to watch the ocean. I wanted to see the ocean when I worked. And I didn't care if I lived in a tent or a studio apartment or whatever, I, I, I would, I, I promised myself I would give up, uh, you know, all the money and savings or whatever, just to spend the money to be able to look at the ocean. And I'm, I'm, again, I'm humbled to, to the fact that I, I get to do that still. And I hope that that never goes away. And every day I wake up, believe it or not, I think to myself, it's all shit. It's all going to go away. And if I don't get my act together, and work hard I'm, I'm not going to be able to look at that so i i i i take every day like i've i've lost everything and um and fight to get it back well, i always wanted a finger uh Aretha franklin <laughs> i don't know why but it's just a fucking gym <laughs> it's because of the noise she would make talking the, about the bubbling sound we were talking about respect dom but maybe she <laughs> You know, stammer in the beginning of the, the song if you did that. Yeah, right. Hey, this isn't going to be on, right? <laughs> not not. <laughs> did you start rolling yet? <laughs> Been rolling the whole time. <laughs> uh, no, but uh, I mean, I, I uh, you know, I, I think that's nice to kind of pursue, you know, at least one thing and try to try to attain that goal. There's nothing wrong with you know waking up by the beach every morning. You know, it's a weird thing. It? you make decisions in in your life that you know are not going to be necessarily you know how people you know your parents always say save for a rainy day make sure you um but i just i always said to myself i don't care if i fucking am going through the penny jar mm -hmm. i i want to i want to be able to be calm by the as i'm doing this podcast now i'm i'm you know i'm you know, I, I look out and I, I'll show you. I just, I don't know if you'll be able to see, but, um, you know. Definitely I, not New York. I, so I just, 
it just you know it it, it sounds it's, it sounds I don't do it to sound conceited. I don't do it to be an asshole. I do it to let people know who are watching that I'm from Longmeadow, fucking Massachusetts. Okay, I'm like I, I I'm functionally special needs. I have barely made it through school, um, and but I had a passion for something that I believed in, and I believed in stand-up comedy, and I believed in comedians, and I. And I believe that I could have an impact if I threw myself into it and, and worked a, a harder and smarter as I possibly could to um, help people achieve what they wanted to achieve. And, and, and so I only show you that because I know what's possible. And Dom is an extraordinary example of what's possible as an artist. And again, hopefully he won't make any jokes about this, but one of the things that Dom, you know, I, I'm, I think I'm uniquely qualified to talk about is that there's a lot of comedians out there who whose act uh, uh, lacks uh, substance, lacks content that you remember, that you can tell your friends about, that you can talk about, that has like a, a message, but also simultaneously entertains with the messages about the world and how things are and how your perception of the world is. There's a lot of people that have great content, but they have a hard time really entertaining. And then there's a lot of people who have this thing where it's like they have this great entertaining factor, but they don't know how to have the content. And mm -hmm. as the voice and the entertainment factor where he always took the audience to a place where you always remembered him. And you and another thing about Dom that's fascinating most every comic in the world, you don't fucking want to hear the same bits again. You don't want to hear the same themes. You don't want to, you don't want to know it. But there were things about Dom, his little, uh, I don't know what you call them, his, his go-to formulas. You know, I don't mean that in a bad way. You know, it's like, mm. And I don't care if I heard that fucking phrase a thousand times. I wanted to hear it a thousand and one. And that's another thing that he was able to do is he was able to have these kind of formulas that, that worked with new material all over the place, but then the formulas stayed the same. And, and you just looked forward to them. It was almost like when Rodney says, oh, I gotta tell you, I got no respect. You're like, yeah. Yeah, no respect. And it was when Dom would go like, I don't mean that in a bad way. All right, yeah. All due respect. And that's that was his that was his I don't get no respect. And and that's what I remember about Dom. It's so uh -huh. incredible. And 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 again, you know, I don't know Dom as well as you know Dom or Dom knows Dom, because I always I, I guess I had this thing about Dom that and I feel bad about it, but I, I always was kind of like intimidated about Dom. You know, I was like, "Fuck it, this guy is like, this guy is so." There's just something about him that I just have to just kind of just stay back. And I always, I never really, you know, sought Dom out. I never hung out around. If he was talking to somebody, I never walked up. I always stayed back. Because I just there was something about him that I just had this weird reverence for. That, bad, uh, bad breath. <laughs> and so, um, you know, that was my thing. I feel kind of bad about that because I wish I'd uh, been able to Airbnb his mind more throughout, uh, throughout the time and uh, and really get to know him uh, more for the person that I, I saw on stage. What, what, we did. Uh, We've known each other a long time, and you're right. We we never really talked really that much, but I always, you know, nice and nicely and uh, relaxed. But I, I know I don't know why because you never. I don't think we've ever had a, a bad moment either. So mm -hmm. no, but I but I mean it is kind of odd. I've known you for thirty years, and I can honestly say um, never uh, not even a cup of coffee. One cup of coffee is that going to kill it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually embarrassed to say that this is the longest amount of time I've ever spoken 
to Dom, and that's bad. That's 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 disgusting. Can you uh, be I feel bad about it, and I'm sorry, Dom. And uh, but after this conversation, when you realize how thoroughly uh, boring it is, you'll realize why I probably wouldn't uh, talk to you. So it's all could you give me a little, like a rub back on my back, just to, a little tense. <laughs> well, I'm glad we're talking now. And thanks for coming in. What do you punks punks got to say? I got no, I got I got I got nothing. Yeah, I don't I don't. Uh... The man's a part of comedy history. You got nothing. Well, I got. You know a lot. I got a, I got a lot, but Brian's got nothing. Yeah, I got yeah, I got I got nothing. So, what, what did you guys ever work together? And like, I, I guess never worked on any projects or anything together. Or you guys just crossed paths. I mean, I guess you know there is so many people in the business at a you know at a certain point. I guess that kind of just happens. You know. Thank you. Did you did you um, have a, a um, what's that name the and there we Google Street. There was the Boston Comedy Club or something like that. Boston Comedy Club on McDougal, which was where Chappelle and all those guys uh, kind of hung out and started. Really, CK was the first, my first client ever. Was oh, wow. And he mm -hmm. helped put up the lights and the sound. And uh, I, it was a weird kind of place. It was a fun place. I used to call it the Anne, uh, what did I call it? The Anne Frank's House of Comedy. It was like a, it was like a attic that was like, a, but it was fun. And, um, I remember when positive you you gave me a spot there. You wanted to go on or something like that. So I, I knew I guess you were one of the the owners or something. Yeah, I own that. I own that comedy club. But yeah, I think at the Laugh Factory, like one of the things I, I want to say is that you know sometimes this business stains you and things happen and you don't have. Sometimes you have great relationships with people and sometimes you lose them and. You know, one thing about Jamie Masada throughout my time knowing him, and, and I, I'm sure you know, there's times when he has felt good about me at times when he's wanted to run me down in a truck. But one thing I'll say is that he always created this incredible environment for comedians there that uh, was unparalleled and, and how he took care of them. And at Christmas time, he would always have these extraordinary gifts that he would spend you know, massive amounts of money on these jackets or bags or things. And then, but also the Thanksgivings where he, you know, would have Thanksgiving for the homeless and comedians would come in and, or the comedy camp. He always, you know, a, a lot of times comedy club owners, they don't, they get a bad rap. And I'm sure Jamie would say he's gotten a bad rap sometimes, but there's nobody like Jamie Masada to bring, people together in so many different ways. And, and, and I think, you know, when I met Dom, he brought a bunch of great comedians like Dane Cook and Harlan Williams and, and Dom and, and just all these really, you know, wonderful Bobby Lee, you know, all these crazy misfits that, uh, you know, when he put these great shows together and I, I have a lot of respect for James Masada and, uh, and I, and I, I'm always blown away by what he's uh, accomplished. I was, um, I came in to do some stand up for them. And it's a lot of homeless people and a lot of poor people and uh, whatever. And um, I go on stage and it's not, it's not full. I said, What's, what, why are there empty seats? They, and some guy, I was, they, left, they left. I said, they left? They left, they, they left the place where there's food and shelter. This convenience was so bad. And I'd rather sit in a fucking a plastic bag than, than sit, sit in front of this fucking. And I was thinking, how bad could these guys have been to leave that that, that warm place with food and money? Yeah, yeah I, 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 I know those shows were bad. I always thought the, the great comics went on on those shows. Oh, it's so hard to to you know the, the, the references. You can't say anything about flight; they don't go anywhere. You know, but just trying to make them laugh. You homeless bastards! <laughs> Get a that? job, you fucking homeless bastard. <laughs> that was that was the Thanksgiving or Christmas that they that they did that. Both, both, yeah. yeah. It was both, I think. Yeah. Dom, I never, I never really asked you this either. Ever were there ever, um, were there ever comedy clubs or festivals or people in the business that just for some reason, they never got you. 
and they never really gave you the opportunities that other people gave you and you were you never really understood why they they didn't rally around you like other people did yeah, Lauren Lauren Michaels was um, mm -hmm. he, he, I don't know what his beef was with me I, I, you know never really I've got a couple of auditions I got a couple of, uh, uh, um, when they're in the between producers and he went back right but Woody, Woody Allen was in there, and he comes up. He comes up to me, and he goes, "I really like your work, man. Fuck, you, you, that's all you had to do the rest of my life." Yeah, that was it, huh? <laughs> yeah. But um, Lauren Michaels, I said, "Lauren, hi, my, I'm Dom Herrera. Just wanted to say hi." He goes, "I know who you are." I go, "What the fuck?" Is he mad at back? That's the only huh. guy that. I mean, you know, because I, I really felt like that I could do the same, you know, as good as uh, as those guys, and like, you know, competitive and like. But I, I, he just didn't like me. And look, he can't like everybody. Right. He's got like, you know, there's a, a thousand people that want to be in. And you know, I wasn't blaming him for anything. But right. I don't know, he seemed like I, I maybe maybe he had he had to be wrong with the person. I don't know. Huh. You know what? You know what else? I I'm sorry. I'm asking this question, but I'm always so fascinated by this stuff. Were there opening acts that you put on to open for you on the road that you really believed in, that you launched their career with your belief in them? Like, were there some people who are really doing well now that you, you like, in other words, Dane Cook used to. I was going to say Dane yes. and, uh, and the other guy who, who owns Maine. He owns the state of, state of Maine. Who's the other? Uh, um, you know, who, who's it? Bob Marley. Oh, Bob oh, yeah. Marley. I had the, the two of them. That's a good show, isn't it? The two of them and me. And uh, but they, they no, these fucking guys are killers. We, we had a great time, you know. I, I knew there was something special with Dean, and certainly Bob is so fucking goofy. You can't help but laugh. Mm -hmm. it? Did you ever have an act that you like? I remember um, Robin Williams. I believe he said. In an interview, people asked him, is there ever anybody that you had a hard time following? And he said, there's only one guy, uh, Lenny Schultz. <laughs> uh, and he's the only one. All I shit, all, all shit, Lenny. All pigs, Lenny. <laughs> he's the only one I didn't want to follow. Is there anybody that you just were like, oh, Jesus. I, I just, I know I'm a killer, but I don't want to fucking follow this guy. It's all according to the situation, but not really. I mean, uh, it's Chang. Is that his name? A Ronnie Chang, fantastic. Big butt, but he was like so dirty, and you could see that it was an older crowd, and, and that was hard to follow. But I just made mm -hmm. fun of him, him, you know, making the, the choice, cho choices that were terrible. You know. <laughs> I remember Jay Moore used to have this guy open up for him, who's no longer with us, and. You know, he's one of those standing ovation guys, Ralphie May, you know, like a 500 pound guy who just, yeah. Had, I'd be like, Jay, why you have this guy open up for you? I mean, he's like killing. And, uh, and he said, Hey, listen, you know, uh, I want to have the best try to blow me off the stage. And if I can't handle it, that means I got to get better and I got to figure out what I can do. That's a good approach. I don't like, uh, Brian smokes that pipe like it contains like. Oh yeah, yeah. I got a little uh, little tobacco pipe over here. Unbelievable! It's like it's like your it's like it's like that's a penis and you're a porn star. It's unbelievable. No, yeah. You know what's funny? I was thinking about. It. I was walking around. It's like you don't have to charge a cigarette. You know, you got to charge this thing. How how much of a pain in the ass is that? You know. Yeah, it's a horrible modern day problem you have there. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's what went through my mind today. Mom's talking about homeless people in plastic bags. You're worried about charging your fucking <laughs> e cigarette. It's come on. Yeah. I'll give I'll give the guy a buck if I got a if I got a dollar in my pocket. I'll I'll toss a buck in the bucket. You know. So when are you going back to stand up? <laughs> I hope you're talking to Brian. <laughs> Not soon, that's for sure. Guy, I think uh I never um I remember the thing that used to bother me the most about stand up and, and it's something that defines great comics and didn't define me is like you go, I'd go on and I'd like, fuck, I'd fucking kill 
And then I go on, run across town to do another show and like do the same fucking material. And like, it wouldn't go as well. And I'd be like, oh, I'm going backwards. I just, I just, I just killed. And now I got to go backwards. And I just couldn't mentally take it. And that's why I wanted to go on the other side of the business. So, sure. I, but you know, but great comics, they can go on. They can bomb for like 80% of their set and kill for the last 20%, fight through it, and then destroy. And it's like, that's something that I just never had the heart for. Uh, what's your name? Kim something on the Sex in the City? I can't even tell. We were doing this benefit for child uh, uh, cancer. Mm-hmm. And my sister has just died recently from it. And you know, she goes, how do you do it? How do you go up there feeling like this when this happened? I said, well, you do just do your best, you know, like, I don't know what to tell you. So I get up there and I start talking about it and I start, and I start crying, mm-hmm. you know? And uh, I said, look, I'm, I'm a human being. My, my sister died and you're totally seeing, showing us pictures of kids, that, kids that, right. uh, yeah. And, all right, let's eat, have a good one, come on. Yeah, Tom, get up there. These yeah. caviar, they're so delicious. <laughs> But um, you know that's tough. I mean, when certain things they don't tell, give enough information, and right. where's, it going to be, where's it going to be funny anyway? So, mm-hmm. One of the most amazing stories you'll hear, Brian, uh, is like, and they're always as a comic, you, you or if anybody in the business, and you're sitting around a table when somebody tells it, it's they're always the greatest stories. And Dom knows what I'm talking about. Where you're you know, you're doing this corporate gig. It's like you're making more money than you've ever made in your life, and it's a fundraiser or something, and you just oh, yeah. there, and the crowd is hot. Everything's wonderful, and then the host mm-hmm. comes on and says, hey, everybody, listen, uh, before we move on with the show, I just want to I just want to say um, I feel so bad about our boss passing away. <laughs> last and oh, anyway, let's have a moment of silence for him. <laughs> Okay, is the comic ready? Dom? <laughs> Dom? I think you're really going to enjoy him, Don Marrera. And it's Thank like, you. Hey, Thank you. Great, great to be back to the more guys. You look yeah. a little pale. Come on. <laughs> but sometimes those can be the greatest moments, and I, I, I want to share with this uh, with the audience because they probably, you know, probably only about 400 people got to be in this room, but after Brody uh, Stevens uh, passed away, they had a memorial for him at the comedy store in the 400 seat main room uh, to give context to the people who aren't in the comedy business. It's where, you know, some of Richard Pryor's hour specials were filmed and um, many others. It's a legendary uh, room and the comedy store is broken up in the three rooms, the belly room, which uh, to give you some history was a, was a, a storage room that Louis Anderson was asked to clean out by Mitzi Shore, the owner. And then there's the original room where, as uh, Dom knows, he's performed many times, and and Dice in his heyday used to close all of the shows there. <laughs> and the main room is the 400 seater, and so you go in, it's packed, and uh, and his family starts off the show with two different uh, speeches that are gut wrenchingly sad, right? You know? The first 20 minutes are just like, there's not one thing comedic about anything. Right. And then they say, uh, you know, crying. They're like, well, we'd like to introduce your host tonight. Um, Please welcome Jeff Ross. Oh, Oh, jeez. And and Jeff goes on, and the first thing he says, he's got his cup like this. He's, He's just drinking. He goes up to the podium, and he says, well, I think I, uh, can speak for uh, everyone here tonight. And uh, I think, uh, listen, if Brody were here tonight and he had to hear the last 20 minutes, I think he would have killed himself anyway. <laughs> and, I, and I just fell to my knees laughing. Oh, that's Chef Roth, right? Yeah. Oh. He's, he's fucking great. <laughs> it's, a, it's a horrible line. That's great. That's awesome. <laughs> what, a great, what a great line. He had, he had cancer too. Yeah. Oy As the Italian said, Oy vey, gishmish. I'm going to take my nap if you guys want to stay here and talk. No. Be my guest. Thomas. 
I'm I'm so honored that it's been you, fun. you had me on, Dom. Oh, yeah, well, it's, it's great. It's great, great to see you and great to learn from you. I hope and, that, uh, I hope that I get a chance to uh, to have you on Industry Standard and uh, and get to talk to you as well because you have a lot to offer a lot of people and through the through the uh, lines and the and the uh, funny things that you say in between uh, serious things. There's a lot of gems in there, and I think. Uh, you know, people could learn a lot from you. Well, the only thing I could teach is uh, just be be normal, be nice to people. It's like, I don't want to get sappy with you, but it's like I went in the comedy store and three of the hottest girls in the world come up to me and kiss me and hug me. And and Paulie comes in and goes, I don't get it. I got three, a three-picture deal and I don't, they don't talk to me. And um, they're all over you. I said, well, I see. he said, what's your secret? I said, there's no secret. Just be nice to people. I don't have to go out of your way to fucking buy them drinks. You know, be nice. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, people respond to that. To that. And better get out there and hug the world. Well, no, it's not advice. Yeah, it's simple. It's simple, man. It's true, too. You thank know? you for always being nice to me and, and always mm -hmm. treating me like I belonged, even when I didn't belong. Well, awesome. You you belong here. Thank you for coming and see you soon. <laughs> see you next let's, time. Let's just start hanging out, hanging around right now. We're new pals. Well, Take nice. care. Thank you. See you guys. Yo, Dom, over here. Hey. Hey, Dom, hey. Yo, Dom.